And so Andre was involved in Bumble also, at least according to Wikipedia. Are, were you involved in Bumble as well? No, I left before Bumble time. Uh, I mean, it was a similar, I mean, I, so speaking from the outside, so I wasn't inside, so I, I'm not giving you any inside information on, <laughs> on Bumble, but the, uh, <laughs> you know, legal disclaimer there. Uh, we, we definitely always had the idea of kind of, we wanted, we thought one way to kind of distribute Badu was to have, you know, kind of the back end was all the stuff that was working, like all the, all the kind of US interact, UX interactions and, and that sort of stuff. And then you could actually just kind of pick and choose what you wanted to change on the front end and kind of, you know, create something that might appeal to a, you know, a different audience. Right. And so Bumble was definitely like part of that. And obviously Whitney and, and the team did an amazing job kind of, you know, bringing that to huge heights. So. Yeah, no, it, and it's it's really interesting. Like, what what are some of those things that you guys did early on with with Badu, um, like to get initial users and get traction and you know that critical momentum? Yeah, so at the time, and this was very website centric. Uh, the uh, what we took is that there was there were sites where people were like interacting very heavily online, kind of like you know a bulletin board type sites, uh, forums, you, you would say. And so on those sites, there wasn't really a way to, or at least the people running them didn't have a way of kind of bringing them to life uh, and allowing you to really kind of interact and meet with the people. It was very text-based. And, and so what we actually ended up doing, which, I mean, we tried a bunch of stuff, like, like always, you try a bunch of stuff and, and one of them ends up working and you look like a genius. Uh, so the, uh, the thing that actually ended up working is we created the community section for a couple of these sites that were quite popular, but they didn't have a real way to socialize between the users on that site, right? One was an Italian uh, bulletin board type site, like Forum, and the other was a Spanish site called Mini Wegos, like Little Games. Uh, and so we created the Comunidad section of those two sites, and, and in the end, uh, I mean, not to get deep into kind of like business deals, but like in the end, we were basically like, okay, we believe in our system. You guys uh, that run these sites don't, we're just going to give you a couple cents per user that you kind of get into our section. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Twelve million users. And then what what was the kind of trans uh, transition into uh, the VPN stuff? How did that come about? So I left Badu. Um, I wanted to. I had a couple of people, which actually ended up bringing me to you know creating humanity with with Pete Ward. But the I left Badu and I had a couple people close to me over those next couple years uh, got late stage cancer or got diagnosed with late stage cancer. Uh, and so when I was leaving Badu and then I was like, okay, well, I want to do something. I feel completely helpless. I can't help these people. You know, I should do something more impactful in the world. And actually, when I look back on Badu, I, th I think creating Badu was actually quite impactful. There's probably a lot of people on earth because of Badu, <laughs> literally. Uh, but I... At the time, I was thinking I want to do something more impactful. I didn't know what that meant. I meant uh, I went to New York, and I don't know if you remember this, but like SOPA, actually it's coming up on the anniversary. Uh, SOPA and PIPA were these two internet censorship laws that were going through the U.S. Congress, uh, and I got quite involved because you know I didn't really need to do anything. I was like I was kind of like you know mentoring some startups. I you know I didn't really need to get a job at the time, uh, and so I got quite involved in that. Didn't really play a huge role, but got at least mentally quite involved in it and went out to rallies and tried to, you know, work on those, like press the button, call your congressman, you know, those kind of little UXs. I love that. And so 700 million users is insane. That's like one tenth of the entire world. Like, how did you guys yeah, do no that? There's no way to actually get your head around that either. <laughs> it's no. Like, yeah. like, you say like 7 million users and then you say 700 million and like your head doesn't actually register too much difference between the two things. But yeah, it's, a. Uh, I mean, it's, I think one thing to say is that we were able to capture, well, first, before I joined the team on desktop, they were able to capture something amazing, which they actually like wrap a bunch of technology that no one really cared about or knew how it worked, wrap it and just like hand it to the user, press a button, everything's going to be cured kind of, you know, product, which, which, I, which I love. Uh, but we... I think it was a, it was just a bunch of, uh, I, I mean, th this is always these things with these questions, right? It's like, it was actually just a, a string of predominantly good, some, some bad, but predominantly good decisions over like, you know, a three, four year period. I would say that when you have these kind of projects, you don't need to, you don't need to get revenue right away. But the second you have like a, a real revenue stream 
from something, it really opens up your options. Because then you're, because once we could actually know that we were going to convert, say, 6% of our users to the subscription, then I could actually start, you know, bringing in, you know, marketing people and being like, okay, you know, if we can, if we can acquire them for this price, let's keep acquiring them. And so that, that did explode the last, you know, couple years I was there because we were able to do that. Um, and, and we just, I, I think people, people were cheering for us, you know, to a certain extent. We were, we were the investments that they made that they could talk about at, at dinner parties. So that, that's always good, you know. And did you guys use, like find those users primarily with paid media, like with like ads or was it more organic or like content driven marketing or what? It was, the majority was organic as in, uh, you know, we got to the top of the, I mean, distri the distribution methods were, were, were basically be at the top of the app store and people will find you when they're looking for, you know, privacy or, you know, anti-censorship or unblocking. Um, and so it was, it was majority, majority organic, but then once we were able to get a consistent kind of revenue stream, uh, you know, it ended up probably in the end being like 40, 60, you know, 40 paid, 60 organic. If we had, you know, we would have kept growing if we had turned down the marketing, but there wasn't any reason to because it was, you know, ROI positive. So. so, so let's talk about humanity. So, I mean, I kind of jokingly said you're trying to cure death, right? But like, what what is the mission with humanity? How did it how did it come about? Yeah, and so kind of yeah, going back to why I you know one of the reasons I left Badu and uh, on the personal side, even though on one side I found one great mission, which was protecting the internet and found a great team that was already doing that and jumped on with them. On the personal side, I still had this kind of, you know, feeling that if I didn't, if I didn't spend a bunch of time figuring out what could have been done for those, you know, those two people that passed away uh, from cancer, if, if I didn't spend time doing that, I was just going to find myself in that same situation again. And it, it might be me, it might be my wife, it might be, you know, whoever close to me, right?